Hi guys, so welcome to this webinar. Um, if you can hear me, could you just write in the chat that you can hear me? Um, and uh, so I can uh, see that you're uh, around. Um, I've just turned, uh, great. So I've just turned <laughs> on the microphone. And um, welcome to my CBD hemp uh, webinar. I decided to run this webinar because uh, in the last year or two years, hemp, CBD and cannabis has taken a predominant role um, in the media and I've been seeing more and more miscommunication uh, around hemp, around CBD and so this webinar is really to answer your questions. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rebecca Shaman. I got involved in the cannabis industry or the hemp industry um, in 2006. I was working in uh, corporate social responsibility and sustainable development, looking at sustainable projects that uh, corporates could invest in that were really good solutions, clean solutions for helping um, and being more corporately responsible. And I kept coming up against uh, uh, projects that were doing amazing stuff but weren't really tackling the issues that we face with the climate change and the environment. And I became disheartened and in 2005 I was sent a dissertation looking at hemp as an environmental tool for um, cleaning up toxic soil and toxic air. And immediately it turned me on to the plant and I started doing my research and I realized what an important plant hemp is for humanity and actually is our best friend in the plant world. It provides um, 25,000 uses and I also, as I dug deeper and looked into the history of hemp and the history of hemp in, is specifically in the UK, I could really see the power and the um, importance of hemp, that in the history of hemp in the um, in the past and how we have relied on it um, for so many things. Actually, prior to 1937, we were in a hemp-based economy and uh, plant-based economy of which hemp was a, a big part of that. In, in under Henry VIII and Elizabeth I's rule, it was illegal not to grow hemp. You had to grow a root, which was about a quarter of an acre of your land, and that had to be in hemp because it was so important to the Navy and to the uh, shipping industry and to the navy industry um, and so um, France, Germany, uh, England, Russia, we all had strong hemp industries. I'm not going to go into the hemp, uh, into the hemp history now, that's for another time, um, but what we found is that in 1971 under the Misuse of Drugs Act, hemp and cannabis was massively suppressed and in about 2012, um, due to Israel being curtailing to the political agenda, um, was using a CBD and working with a cannabis and came across the endocannabinoid system and the importance of an endocannabinoid uh, system that feeds the immune system and our brains. And cannab cannabis or the hemp plant provides these cannabinoids um, to um, feed us. So suddenly there was a huge revival of the cannabis and hemp plant due to CBD. And this is uh, a in very interesting uh, process and uh, historical movement forward for the plant. In 2010, uh, when I was working with hemp, um, we couldn't, we, we no one knew about the endocannabinoid system. It was only just starting to come out um, within two years and now obviously we see CBD is everywhere. And that's changing politically everything around the plant. And this is a webinar really to um, ask questions around THC, CBD, uh, what is hemp, what is cannabis, so we can clear up some of the misinformation and some of the uh, confusions around this. So if you could start writing um, on the uh, on a message or um, your questions, it would really help me to move this webinar um, because the aim really is to answer the questions that you that you're that you're wanting to hear and and to um, help you out through this labyrinth of confusion around hemp. So uh, before um, I take the questions, I want to be very clear the difference between hemp, marijuana, and cannabis because this is a a, 
uh, uh, very uh, usual confusion between the three. So marijuana and hemp are all part of the cannabis plant. So cannabis sativa L is the Latin name of the of the plant and cannabis naturally produces a number of cannabinoids of which THC is one of them, CBD, CBN, CBG, terapines. It holds a an amazing array of important cannabinoids that we need as humans to feed our endocannabinoid system. And it isn't psychoactive, CBD, um, and the THC is the psychoactive and a plant naturally produces THC because it is a sunlight protector. So it's a UV sunlight protector. So hemp is grown in the summertime. It grows in four or five months and it grows, it needs sunlight to grow. And in order to protect it from the UV rays, um, it produces THC as a protection, which is why there's more THC later on in the plant than there is at the beginning of the plant. Because as it develops and grows and matures and the more sunlight it gets, the more THC it produces. So it naturally produces it. Now hemp, industrial hemp has is, is varieties of cannabis that have a reduced amount of THC. So the THC has been controlled to a limited level, um, legal level. Now, nearly in 2006, when I grew hemp for the first, uh, grew hemp in 2007, but when I started my business in 2006, it was 0.3% THC um, was the agreed amount that we could grow um, um, legally. Now they've reduced it to 0.2% THC. However, there is a movement in the European um, industry to push it back up to 0.3% because in Canada and America, they, their, their standard is 0.3%. So in order to make it standardized across the world, 0.3% um, is considered the ideal. So at the moment in Europe, and, and, and um, it's 0.2%. Um, THC. So really the hemp, why you would grow for hemp is in, in, in the past and historically why you would grow, you would go for the fiber or the seed um, and you would eat the leaf and the leaf has always, the leaf and the flower has always been consumed. They, we found uh, recipes from the Pope um, from the 15th century when the Pope would have hemp uh, soup. Um, we ate it prolifically and not only did we eat it but we fed it to our animals and by feeding it to our animals we then also digested the hemp. Um, we used the stalk for fiber and we also used the seed for food. So the seed was always uh, ground down and, and utilized um, but the, the fiber was really uh, the stalk that created the fiber was incredibly useful uh, for textiles, um, for um, construction, for canvas. Um, canvas um, comes from the word cannabis because it's the only seafaring fabric. It made the ropes, it built the ships. I mean, it was an, a really important uh, um, uh, crop uh, for, for humanity prior to the fossil fuel uh, industry taking over in around the, in the 1930s. So what we're seeing is that this plant that has been used for thousands of years by humanity and is so essential to our health and well-being is being has been demonized and is now being reignited and at this point um it's really an important moment in history for both the plant and for humanity because I really believe that the cannabis plant is for the people it is a people's plant. It it helps us um, for our well-being, for our health, for our sustainability, and to bring the in, the the planet back into balance. Um, its main its main uh, purpose, really, in hemp, is uh, to bring things back into balance. When we ingest THC. Uh, what the THC does is that it goes to the cells that have mutated and brings them back into balance. So it's for by its very 
being that the aim of the plant is is to help keep us in balance and and this time because we're so out of balance bring us back into balance so we're in this position now where it's been suppressed for 70 years, which means that no one actually controls it. Um, we've had people keeping it alive in the underground who've been jailed. 850,000 people in the States, more or less uh, uh, around that, have been jailed for cannabis-related offenses. And suddenly we're seeing this big rise in uh, the hemp interest. And suddenly we're in a situation where this plant that is one of the last free plants on the planet um, being circled by Bayer, Monsanto, and other big players. And this is a moment where this plant can either really help and serve humanity, or it gets taken over by big, the big guns and taken from us, and we just get the, the sprinkles at the bottom. Uh, this is a really big fear of mine, specifically for the plant, because uh, the plant is a plant for the people which is why um, I set up the British Hemp Association in order to help protect the hemp industry from um, and, and to grow a hemp industry that is actually for the people and supports the people and helps the people come forward. Um, but I'm I'm today I'm talking solely as myself. Um, I'm not talking on behalf of the BHA in any way, shape, and form. This or the British Hemp Association. Um, anything that I say is my own personal view. I want to make that very clear as well. This is my own personal view around hemp, having been in the industry since 2006 and having been part of seeing the change and the shift um, and being part of what's been going on uh, and realizing the importance of maintaining our sovereignty over the seed, um, the people's sovereignty over the seed. Um, I, it, it needs education. So my aim really is to help educate more so more people can get involved so that we can really start building a movement um, that will protect this plant and keep it within the, the safe confines of community rather than seeing it disappear into the big corporations and losing our connection with this plant and ultimately um, with with the profits that could be going to be creamed off the tops from the big corporations to be able to keep it within our community. Um, the old age saying money grows on trees actually comes from hemp um, because uh, the there was 33% of hemp was uh, used in uh, the money system and currency. And so when they say money grows on trees, it was because um, hemp was used to, um, was woven into the in, in, into actual currency, into money. Um, now, obviously, we've got this horrible plastic stuff, but um, it was always a very important part. And it is a currency, and it is a very important currency, and it's a currency that people need to be able to utilize within themselves and not to have it taken away. So that's some of the idea. Um, I'm going to start reading some of the questions now, and then as I'm reading, and if you need, if you have anything else to add, just please add it to the box. And what I'll do is I'll go up question by question. Um, so, Hugh, how do you see the future of hemp as a carbon neutral, even negative building material? Well, the great thing about hemp is that you're growing it. So, as you're growing it, it naturally sequesters carbon and toxins out of the atmosphere and also up through the root structure. So the root structure goes three meters down and can suck up um, really toxic soils. Uh, in Chernobyl, um, hemp was used to clean up a lot of the radioactive um, spillage from the nuclear reactor and um, is a really amazing tool for clean up um, spillages and uh, toxic um, soils and cleaning that up. So obviously if you're cleaning up nuclear waste you're not going to be able to turn it into buildings but if you've got basic um, degraded soil and you plant hemp then what it does is it binds the soil together through a filaments, um, thin th filaments that connect the hemp uh, plants together with a tap root. So not are you sequestering. So there's, uh, we've done, I did a study, I got a study done and we estimated about 11 tons of carbon per hectare of hemp is sequestered out of the atmosphere. Now I'm not here to decide, to discuss whether there's an issue with carbon, but the 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 thing is, is that if we put in, um, if we, if a plant sucks up more carbon, it, it sends out, um, 
we we can turn that carbon into something really useful like uh building materials but what's more important is that the because it comes from plants it's biodegradable in that it does eventually break down back to the earth because it's made from the earth and this is for me the most important point uh the thing about cannabis and hemp and and the products that it makes is that because it's been grown it biodegrades back in the problem with what we're having at the moment, the waste that we're creating is that it doesn't go away. Um, they did a clean up on a beach and they found a fairy liquid bottle from the 1950s and they could work out where it was from because of the logo. And uh, this is very, this is incredibly worrying. One fairy liquid bottle that, you know, hasn't biodegraded at all since 1952. So the, the, the issue that we're facing is not so much climate change, but the incredible amounts of waste that we're creating with products that aren't biodegradable, that aren't being broken down back into the soil, back into the land and being able to be used again. So if we started to move back to a plant-based economy, to a using products that we're growing, then we are going to start reducing the amount of um, non-biodegradable waste products that are really actually clogging up our planet to a point where if we continue, um, we're going to run out of really, really good fresh lamb to, to, to put all this, all this waste. And I'm not talking now in our lifetimes, but if we continue in the way we're going and we don't actually change, then certainly future generations are going to have a much bigger problem than what we're already facing today. And I'm I'm looking further into the future, not so much where we are now, but for our children's children. In fact, in shamanism, we look seven generations into the future. So from a shamanic perspective, looking seven generations into the future is a horrific scenario. So if we can change our behavior now by moving into um, creating more products or all products made from the plants, then we are going to see a big clear up and um, for, our, for the seventh generation down um, that won't be able to have this, the luxury that we have, we have now because of our behavior. Stuart, Intercon naturally low in THC and high in CBD. Sativa naturally high in THC and low in CBD. Modern industrial hemp was developed after the 1930s prohibition hydro hybridized to be almost non-existent in CBD and THC, etc. Before her prohibition, it was just one plant for rope fiber and CBD and THC tinctures. Yeah, so there's two part, there's two um, different varieties of cannabis, indica and sativa. Um, and I'm not sure what the question is here, um, but Modern industrial hemp, really in the 1930s, um, yeah, we, the thing is, is that you have to look at it prior to prohibition. When we didn't have prohibition, which is around 1961 with the Single Convention um, Act or the UN Single Convention on Drugs Act and then the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971 when it really, really kind of put an end to all cannabis and hemp production, um, people were just using it. It was a flower. Uh, you know, Queen Victoria swore on on the tinctures for her period pains. Um, it's been in our history for many, many years. Since we've had the prohibition, then the, the strict laws have really uh, demonized and basically paralyzed the industry. But worst of all, we can't get really good crops because the, the great thing about uh, hemp is that it acclimatizes after three generations. So it's called a it's called a weed for a reason and the reason why it's called a weed is because it grows prolifically in the area that it grows in the climate that it grows it can customize itself to the climate the soil uh, the sunlight and um if it's left to its own desires it can it's a healthy plant but while we're under prohibition and we're limited to the 0.2 percent thc and also all the other regulations and 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 only limited to the varieties that we can grow we're very, it's very difficult to spread, um, to have a really, really good healthy plant specifically for CBD. So what the CBD that we're getting right now from the hemp plant is really from hemp that was designed to, to well, that was um, uh, used for industrial purposes for growing fiber. Um, however, it still contains obviously the CBD and the CBN and all the other all the other good cannabinoids, but 
if we were able to remove the prohibition and grow freely the plant, we would see a much healthier, um, much healthier and, and um, stronger plants growing. So Stephanie, to clarify, the hemp plant is a modified version of cannabis with less THC. Yes, so basically that's it. The difference between hemp and cannabis or marijuana is the THC levels. So if you're growing for, let's say if you're growing for THC, CBD from a, a normal uh, a cannabis plant or THC, if you're growing for the flower specifically, then you would grow differently than if you're growing for the fiber, the stalk. And so you would use different varieties. So you can grow hemp for, or you can grow cannabis for the stalk, the flower and leaf, the seed, and also the root. And I have been told, though it hasn't been verified, that the root was used in gunpowder. So it was used as part of gunpowder. So you, um, we, ha so depending on what you want to grow for, you would grow a specific variety depending on what you were going through. So at the moment, what we have available to us is hemp for um, the fiber or hemp for the seed and fiber, um, because we're not uh, because we're not allowed in England to process the leaf or the flower. And this is a big problem for the UK hemp industry um, because the most valuable part of the plant at this time is the seabed, is the flower and the leaf. Um, you can grow, the farmers can grow hemp, but they aren't allowed to process um, the leaf or the flower, which means that all CBD in this country is coming in from Europe. Okay, where they have less restrictions. So wherever there's less restrictions, that's where the CBD is being made and is these are imports, um, which leaves the us in a very vulnerable position and also crazy position because if we allowed our farmers to grow the hemp and the flour and produce our own CBD, we could create a domestic CBD market, but also we could put our own like um, important regulations in place in regards to organic, if it's organic, if it's clean, how it's done. And at the moment, we're getting imports where those rigorous tests m might not be available. Certainly, if you're buying any CBD from China, I would not ingest any CBD that's being um, sent from China because you don't know what the, the soil is like and if the soil is toxic and the uh, taproot is uh, sucking up all that toxicity, is going straight into the flower and the leaf. So you really want to be sure that whatever product that you are ingesting is organic so that the soil is clean. This is a really important point. Andrew, in using cannabis oil for the treatment of conditions such as cancer, I understand that both THC and CBD are needed in a good proportion for a full therapeutic effect. Is that correct? Yes, definitely. So one of the one of the reasons behind the psychosis is because a lot of uh, the THC, the skunk that's going onto the markets, is not balanced with CBD. So CBD is a really, really important part of the cannabinoids that a plant create, um, uh, secretes or, 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 or creates, um, produces. So if you are taking a solely like heavy THC without the CBD, the CBD, the, the THC is working on the cellular level, um, on the tumor level, going into the cells um, of the tumor and, and, and working with that. But the CBD will boost your immune system and boost your brain as well, your brain function. So you're getting a really, really good um, dose of uh, immunity, which is very often what we need in cancer is to build our immune, uh, our immune up and also brain as well to um, help the brain think more clearly and to get more active. So if you're, if you are using THC oil, then with a, and a good dose of CBD is going to give you that 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 balance. Um, and also, if you are smoking um, cannabis, um, if you are smoking just pure, very very high CBD, uh, sorry THC. If you're growing very high, uh, if you're smoking very high THC without the CBD, then this can often trigger off. If you're if you're um, uh, 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 
connected to this like it's not for everybody but for some people if they have very high THC without CBD then it can kick off psychosis really really important the balance of um, a high CBD uh, low THC or a one-to-one -one is is actually really really good also CBD helps you to sleep um, relax anxiety and stress so also if well if you are suffering from cancer and you need to be in a relaxed situation and you need to be able to sleep, then the CBD really helps with that treatment as well. Okay, Stuart, the real medicine is made from the cannabis, not modern industrial hemp. That is why the industrial hemp growers are cold pressing the hemp seed oil and sending a CBD oil, which is wrong. The CBD is extracted from the flower, not the seed. This is very true. If you're buying CBD, that is from the seed it's not proper cbd cbd comes from the flower and the leaf it's contained in the flower and leaf not from the seed the cd the seed does not contain cbd and that is why we are able to process the seed into products and not the flower and the leaf so if you are buying any cbd that says it comes from the flat from the seed of the hemp or it's that's then it's that's just cold pressed hemp seed oil which is legal on the market um, and not from the, which has been on the market for years and years and years. Um, and the, you need to, if you're going to have a CBD, it needs to come from the flower and the leaf. Um, Carla, first and foremost, it's food. Our bodies need it for vital for health. Absolutely. It's, we have an endocannabinoid system. They don't even teach this in Western medical school, the endocannabinoid system. They don't even know it exists. So this is a big problem because the endocannabinoid system feeds our immune system and our brains, which is why we're seeing a massive rise in um, immune deficiencies, but also in Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and a lot of brain degenerative brain diseases. And this is because we're not feeding our brains. Um, we've almost neglected our brains, and with all the screen time and the phones and everything, we really need to be um, putting food, giving ourselves brain food, and um, cannabinoids, and CBD unlocks the receptors in our brains and opens that up. So it is a really important brain food. In fact, it, everyone should be um, ingesting CBD as a health supplement um, to keep their immune their immune health, their immune system healthy, their endocannabinoid system and, and their brain functioning. Um, we don't really talk when we talk about pharmaceutical medicine and 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 uh, disease. We go to a doctor when we're ill and they give us a pill. But what about preventative? What about looking at things that help us stay well and happy and vibrant? And kind of, uh, CBD is a, a really important uh, supplement for us to take on a daily basis that's going to reduce high levels of stress and anxiety, help us sleep better, boosting our immune systems and also giving us some really good brain food, especially with all the um, Wi-Fi and screen um, time that we have, um, that we, we are so subjected to. Can you please provide some history about spiritual uses of cannabis in various cultures? Uh, unfortunately, um, cannabis has always been used. I mean, it, they, they say that Jesus anointed people and it, there's a, a very strong um, thesis that actually he anointed with cannabis oil and that he cured a lot with cannabis oil. Um, it's, there's lots of references of it in the Bible. Um, it's been used um, for thousands of years in so many different ways. They've even found it 12,000 years ago, um, traces of cannabis. So it's been it's been used um, spiritually and um, culturally for for thousands of years. In fact, the is I think it's very interesting. This is my personal belief, is that since the prohibition really of cannabis. So in 1937, uh, America brought out the Marijuana Tax Act, and basically all the hemp farmers in the states was caught under this Marijuana Tax Act um, because you couldn't differentiate marijuana from hemp um, and so basically the whole industry was decimated in 1942 um, because of the manila hemp that or the from the banana genus that was being sent over from the philippines dried up because of the war and, and um, the Japanese invasions, they had to go back to growing domestic hemp again. So there was in 1942 a film made called Hemp for Victory, which you can Google and find on YouTube. And you can also find some interesting videos from the past around um, hemp, the, the hemp in, in the States. Anyway, this Hemp for Victory 
uh, um, really um, pushed uh, farmers in the States to regrow hemp um, for the war effort. So by the 1950s, hemp and cannabis was prolific. Um, and so in 1961, with the single convention, um, the UN single convention on drugs, uh, it started to, um, it included cannabis into that. And by the 1971 Misuse of Drugs, drugs Act in the UK, all it was completely prohibited. Now we can see from that time, the state of the planet and our human health has completely deteriorated. Since actually banning this plant, there has been a massive slide and de disintegration, not only of human health, but also of planetary health. And this is all part of the whole um, process of not giving us sovereignty over Mother Nature. The fact that we even criminalizing a plant just seems so um, ridiculous if you were an alien coming from another planet and came down and, and you were criminalizing nature um, because it interferes with big businesses. Um, is a, is really a crime against humanity. And what we're seeing is this revival, but it's really important that this plant stays within the, um, for the people, by the people. And we don't give this rights up of this a majorly important plant to big corporations that will basically rape her and give us the, um, the, uh, the, and, and send us these little bits of, uh, uh, crumbs. Um, it's really for us everything. Can you share your thoughts on addiction, daily usage of cannabis, please? Okay, so if people are smoking it, really, really make sure that the cannabis that they're smoking has a CBD, THC content equal to The big problem is while it's in prohibition, you are going to come across uh, underground growers and, and street dealers that are, you know, getting what they can. This happened when alcohol was prohibited. When alcohol was prohibited, people died from bootleg alcohol. Um, there was people went mad on bootleg alcohol. Um, prohibition doesn't help the problem. It increases the problem. So with any addiction, it's a very, very, it's, it's a, there isn't one solution fits all. It depends on the person themselves, why they're taking it, why they need it, um, what's the reasoning behind it, um, whether people, whether, uh, what I see more and more, and this might be a bit controversial, but I do see young kids that smoke cannabis and young kids that drink alcohol are very, very different. They're very different. Now, there's a lot of young kids. Everyone seems to um, go through a stage of uh, experiencing cannabis. It's like a rite of passage. Most people that have smoked it or tried it, some people connect to it, some people don't. It's like any addiction, whether it's a food addiction or a smoking addiction or a tobacco addiction or an alcohol addiction. People are utilizing it for a certain reason. You can't demonize cannabis um, on the addiction itself. An addiction is a, a very wide, broad um, process um, and depending on what your addiction is will depending on um, why you're addicted will depend on the best way forward however if you if people are addicted then it is about talking it through and finding ways of getting really good clean cannabis um, and slowly weaning people off but I mean people are there's uh, addictions to coffee tobacco I mean everyone there's a lot of addictions around and cannabis is is one of those um it, it falls under that that bracket of or, um and it can be used as an addiction but um if they get clean good cannabis and it's there's a lot of health benefits attached to it much more than you find if you're um in an alcohol dependency is the case that CBD works better with THC content higher? No, CBD is a um, CBD is a it can be taken on its own. You don't need THC to take CBD. CBD is a supplement that should be taken every day to feed our endocannabinoid systems. That is our um, immune system and our brains. THC is a psychoactive part of the plant. If you take THC, it's incredibly good for cancer, nausea pain relief and muscle spasms. Those are the four areas that it really, really helps with uh, THC. If you're taking THC, I would say take it with an equal dose of CBD, okay? But you can take T CBD without THC and it will automatically feed your endocannabinoid system. But if you are taking THC, uh, it, it's, it's recommended to take THC 
with some levels of uh, CBD with it so that you're boosting your immune system and your brain while you're also eat it, using the THC. Big Pharma have been growing at British Sugar now for four years, three crops a year, saying it's for children with epilepsy. It seems no one is getting it in the UK. Yeah, Carla, this is a big problem. Um, GW Pharmaceutical are the only company with a monopoly to, they have the monopoly to grow cannabis. Um, we are the biggest exporters of cannabis, of legal cannabis, um, according to the WHO report. We are, they are, they have the sole license to produce medicine. As we all know, Theresa May's husband has shares in it. Um, and so does uh, Victoria Atkin, the uh, drugs minister or the ex drugs minister, should I say. Um, and so we are in a situation where people, we're criminalizing people for growing it and utilizing it for their own health and well being. Um, and allowing, on the other hand, uh, giving out licenses to one company that has <laughs> shares in the government, which goes to show you the utter hypocrisy and 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 issues within the cannabis um, uh, industry, because the problem is, it's because of prohibition and because of government involvement in all of that. Um, we're seeing this uh, cartel really created, which means that if we don't act soon, um, the sovereignty of the plant will be taken away. We're already seeing that quite quickly now, but it will be taken away from us and handed over to big pharma and to big business. And that would be a real, real crime against humanity because for 70 years, while it's been in prohibition, you've had really brave souls um, keeping the plant alive, breeding, um, working with it, keeping it alive, um, handing it out. It's, it's never really disappeared. It's always been in the underground and suddenly now it's coming out and the hypocrisy and the lies around it are slowly um, coming to light. Um, it's going to be very interesting and very important for, for us to get involved in protecting this plant so that we can use it for our health and well-being rather than handing it over to big pharma who will basically uh, take it for themselves. On this point as well, it's really important that cannabis or the hemp plant uh, or the cannabis plant is seen as separately to any other medicine. The thing with cannabis is that it has something what we call an entourage effect. And the entourage effect is um, that it contains so much goodness. It contains terrapines, it contains flavonoids, it contains um, CBD, CBN, CBG, T uh, CBD, it just so many, 160 of only that we know so far is about 80. And so if you, you can't just isolate a part of the plant and hope that that's going to help um, a, a, an illness, basically everyone is different and this plant works differently for everybody. So it doesn't work under the big pharma um, model. It doesn't work under that model. You can't just isolate CBD or isolate THC and hope that that's going to cure a plant, uh, cure a, a, a problem. What you need is, is the whole plant because the whole plant contains the medicine. And it has always contained medicine. The plant medicines have been ingested for thousands and thousands of years. We only ever ingested plant medicines. So to now um, uh, criminalize nature like we're doing and isolating different areas of the plant and hope that putting it into a white pill and hope that's going to work, um, it's, it's just not, it's just not going to work because we need the whole plant medicine. Um, and that whole plant medicine will work differently for different people, which is why there's just so many different varieties and species and lots of ways we could work. If, we were given uh, free reign to really work. It's a very in amazing plant for humanity. Um, and you could actually um, grow eventually uh, plants specifically for, for individuals that need it, um, which is why a lot of uh, patients are now growing for themselves so that they can um, work with the plant and find the right medicine for them. So. Carla, I've watched Holland and Barrett at 5% stop someone having a seizure and it's really helped my friend in many ways with her mental health and overall health. Exactly. And this is because it reduces anxiety and stress, helps us sleep better and um, stops um, uh, muscle spasms. So it's, it's an amazing uh, CBD. Like I said, should, if we took it, especially at this time when the anxiety and stress is so high, it's really important that we have access to CBD. 
Can you recommend a CBD brand? Um, there's a lot out there. I don't want to name any specifically because um, I just think, um, but what I'll do is I, if you go on to the British Hemp Association, um, all of the um, all of the members of the British Hemp Association, if you go onto the website, www.britishhempassociation.co.uk, uh, all our members have been verified and um, I would, I, um, all of those products I would uh, recommend. So just go on and see which one resonates. I mean, this is the thing. This is where you tune into your own needs and wants. You will know intuitively if something doesn't feel quite right. So um, if I would go on and see which one actually um, resonates. Go on to the to the website, read their story, read what what they're what they're saying about it, and if it feels and resonates with you, try a bottle. Um, again, different different uh, companies will have different things, so it's about trying, testing, and seeing what works for you. Uh, can it affect white cell count? I've been taking THC and CBD on my white cell count. Is really I sorry, Jen, I I don't know the answer to that one. Um, I, not that I've heard, but it could be a number of things. I I I don't specifically. I haven't heard that it affects white cell count at all. Um, if you why are you taking THC and CBD? Um, if you're taking it for cancer, that might be a very um, a reason for why you've got a, a low white count cell. But if you're just taking CBD, it shouldn't be affecting anything. That it should be boosting your immune your immunity, not not lowering it. So CB Monica, Rebecca, where can we buy CBD today legally? So CBD is legal on the shelves at the moment. Um, and so anyone that's selling CBD is selling it legally. We just can't process it legally in the UK. So all the CBD that's available to you is coming from abroad. Um, what we want to do at the British Hemp Association is enable our farmers to process a domestic CBD, um, CBD, a domestic CBD product for the UK, um, and, and ideally to, um, for abroad. But while, um, we basically farmers have to destroy the leaf and the flower and they're not given a license unless they agree to destroying the leaf and the flower which is an, in, an incredibly depressing not only because it's a, a delicious part of the plant and a really important part for human health and well-being but to just cut off the plant's head and plow it back into the, the ground and not being able to utilize the the power of it is just a I don't know it's just a crime against humanity really Okay. I agree. Clinical trials from GW separating the compounds from cannabis sativa and indica have failed placebo tests. There needs to be a balance, not just CBD. Yeah, there needs to be a balance. Exactly. Um, how can people protect this plant? What acts of empowerment can we take? So I've been I've been working on this. Um, please go to the British Hemp Association. What we're looking for is supporters to join the British Hemp Association. So um, it's it's interesting what's happening in Europe at the moment. So I'm just in the last 15 minutes going to give you a. a brief overview of where we are right now. So where we are right now is um, that in, I'm going to give you a brief history of what's happening with CBD just so you get a clear idea. So um, CBD came out um, around 2012 um, and it was being processed by the flower and the leaf. And in 2016, also due to GW Pharmaceuticals, which is the uh, pharmaceutical company of the UK, the one that Theresa May's husband has invested in, they came out with um, the, the Sativex, um, and they they were claiming that CBD is medicinal. So in 2016, the MHRA, which is the Medical Health um, Regulations Authority, um, put out a statement that anyone selling CBD was selling it unlawfully because it was a medicine. This triggered um, the industry, the CBD industry, to come together under the Cannabis Trades Association to fight this uh, memorandum that would be sent out by the MHRA. And they were successful in changing the status of CBD from medicinal to food. Um, so that was, that was a, a, a great thing to be able to take. So they they could prove that it wasn't medicinal, CBD wasn't medicinal, but it was a food supplement. And this was in 2016, in November 2016. So um, the EU then 
having it then being agreed as a food, the EFSA, which is the European Food Standards Agency, then said, well, if it's a food, we need proof that this ha food has been in the diet prior to 1997. Because in 90, they brought out a law that in 1997, any food that comes out into the, um, out to the public after 1997 is considered a novel food and needs to go through rigorous testing unless it can be proved that it has been digested prior to 1997. Now, the industry are in a difficult situation because it's been prohibited <laughs> since 1971 and completely hidden underground. So there isn't any real um, evidence from 1997 on, on, onwards that we have ingested extracts of uh, CBD. So we that was fought in the EU. So they agreed that they would waiver the 1997 um, uh, law and to give us to, to be able to show that it was ingested like further back, so into the 19th century, 18th century. So the EIHA did a fantastic uh, presentation to the uh, EFSA and to e and to Europe in March, showing very clearly that we have been ingesting hemp. Uh, flower and leaf for 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 hundreds, if not thousands, of years, including recipes from the, uh, the from the Pope. The fact that people had, would eat hemp soup and by di and and feeding it to the animals, and then they would be eating their animals, and so it's been in our diet for a very long time. So now the EFSA are um, deliberating on whether uh, it is a novel food or not. So. We are still unsure at the moment of whether it's novel food. Now, the Food Standards Agency have assured us that um, for now, CBD is legal and will remain legal because so many people use it in this country. That for now, it is considered a, a food a food supplement, and there's no problem to the situation. If we crash out, and I know this is a contentious issue, but if we do crash out of Brexit in October and who knows because the whole thing's a complete mess but if we do it means we disconnect from Europe and we can make our own laws under the under a sovereign UK um, and that would ch make the change plan because whatever happens in Europe UK follow so for now any law around what's going to happen with hemp and uh, cannabis or anything that's decided around that level um, is coming from EU level. So UK don't really have a stance on it. However, if we do crash out of Brexit, then we are no longer bound by the EU uh, laws. And so we could then create our own um, laws around um, what we decide. Uh, so the government would, can decide what it wants to do outside of EU. Um, so it's, it's an interesting time at the moment. Um, I just want to uh, mention that. Um, so, Hugh, uh, what, so, sorry, Andrew. Uh, you. Um, as a natural builder, I'm slightly preoccupied with the use of hemp herd as a building material with the addition of natural lime. So do you think that industry has a part to play in bringing this particular use of the plants into mainstream building science? Absolutely. In, fa in fact, Kevin McLeod is a big proponent of hemp. One of our members is Hempcrete UK. Um, please do look them up. Um, it needs standardization and um, and that's what we're looking into at the moment is to standardize the hemp building industry so that it can come into the mainstream alongside um, building industry. So we are looking at that. Please join the BHA, Hugh. Um, this is where we, um, within the, the British Hemp Association, what we're doing is building a, a group of uh, real strong hempites. So, uh, people who really care about the hemp plant, but also um, want to push the the agenda and the hemp agenda forward. So anyone who wants to get involved with the British Hemp Association, anyone that wants to get involved in hemp, please um, visit our website, send an email, join us, um, because together we can start building what's uh, the what's needed in order to get hemp into the mainstream and things like standardization of uh, building materials and that kind of thing is a really important part of that. So Andrew, what are the best methods and doses for taking CBD for both treatment of illness and prevention of illness? Are oils, drops, capsules better? Um, 
Well, you know, capsules work. Um, oils, uh, you go, they digest straight into the bloodstream, so you're not putting, you know, I mean, with a capsule, you've got it into the glutinous thing, you know, it's a capsule. So you're better off just putting it straight under your tongue so it gets absorbed immediately by the body. Again, depending on the levels, everyone is different, and that is a big uh, challenge with um, hemp, um, is that, or, or any CBD or anything like that, is everyone is different, everyone will need different. Some people will down a bottle in, in a week, other people it will take a month. So really, is this is about using your intuition. You can't overdose on CBD. That's the great thing about it. It's non-psychoactive. It, it won't, you know, get you high. It's really just to boost your immune system. So let's say you're very, very low in immunity, that you're needing some um, some booster. You might find that you're taking more sometimes than others. If your anxiety is particularly high at a certain time, then um, taking CBD and then it might calm down again so you don't need so much. So it's about listening to your own body. What does your body need? And we do need to take more sovereignty over our body. We give our sovereignty over our health and sovereignty over to doctors and expect them to know about us and rather than listen to our own bodies and what our own bodies need so it's about tuning in and seeing what works and what doesn't um um so yeah and also the strength of the the medicine you know there's different strengths you could buy there's three percent there's five percent there's different uh, strengths of cbd so also depending on you know if you're getting it in the paste if you're getting it in the drops it, it, it varies completely so it's what works for you specifically very difficult it, it works on an individual basis and this is where andrew you need to tune in to your own intuition and 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 listen to what your how your body is feeling and this is a very important uh process when we work with plant plant medicines is to tune in personally and tune into the medicine and tune into ourselves and, and see what we need. Um, Hugh, I asked that from the point of view of hemp growing as a potentially environmental healing resource and do you think that aspect can endanger the spiritual medical access to this resource? Uh, for me, hemp is a balancer. It's, she brings the planet back into homeostasis. There's so much we can do with this amazing, amazing plant. There's so many areas that we can, it can clean up toxic soils, it can suck um, toxins from the air, we can turn it into 25,000 products including bioplastics, biofuels. Henry Ford Bought the, uh, built the first car from hemp. Rudolf Diesel designed the diesel engine to run on hemp and peanut oil, never on fossil fuels, because they were both hemp farmers. The first four founding uh, fathers of America were all hemp farmers, and the American Declaration of Independence was written on hemp paper. Um, hemp has been a prolific tool for industry, for manufacturing, for, for, for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, on top of that, it also has an incredible health and, and well-being benefit for humanity as well. It works directly with our own bodies. It's our best friend in the plant world. So um, hemp milk made from hemp seeds is the closest thing to breast milk because it contains all the GLAs, amino acids, um, it, it, all the nutrition and the goodness from, from hemp seeds, super, super high in proteins, really, really, really good food. Also, acre for acre, hemp provides more protein than livestock. So if we massively, if you're vegan um, and you need a good form of protein, uh, hemp seed is a fantastic protein source. So if you all reduced our meat eating and eat hemp instead, um, the hemp seed, um, we would we would get more. We would get out the proteins that we need. Um, it's really when you eat when you eat the hemp seed, you do really immediately feel like you can feel it working in the body. And the hemp seed oil as well, um, not for cooking, but for putting on salads and um, ingesting. Really good for arthritis, for um, uh, uh, lubricating our muscles and our joints. Um, hemp seed oil if you take a spoonful a day really really good for for um joints um so you've got the you've got the hemp seed oil you've got hemp seed you've got the flower and the leaf fantastic for cbd for boosting our immune system you have the fiber that can turn into so many different products i mean and not only that but clean up the planet as well so this is a really 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 wonder wonderful wonderful plant for humanity a real necessary plant for humanity um as you can tell one that i'm very passionate remains within the community of humanity so we can clear up some of the huge messes we're creating i really do see if we move 
England back into a plant-based economy, kind of shift away from all the fossil fuels because hemp is the perfect alternative or the, one of the best alternatives to the fossil fuel industry. Uh, prior to 1937, everything was made from hemp. And when the fossil fuel industry started to um, ignite, and the history of hemp is incredibly important here because the political um, bias against hemp is what caused the breakdown of the industry or the, 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 dis, the disappearance of the industry. Um, the, 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 everything we made was, was from uh, plant matter and fiber because the, you, you can manipulate the molecular stru structure. The problem with uh, hemp to turn it into industrial industrial products is the labor needed. So the black slaves that worked in the cotton fields also worked in the hemp fields. Um, it, it, this has been conveniently cut out of history, but most of the, a lot, a lot of the black slaves in America worked on the hemp farms because it was such a intensive uh, retting process to create the fibers needed to make things. But if we could get enough investment, we could go, we could look at R&D and manufacturing. I also see it as a real potential. The steel industry has just disappeared and decimated in the UK. And if we move back to a plant based economy, um, looking at uh, hemp is as strong as steel and, and reignite it um, manufacturing and really um, um, put some money and investment behind it, we could actually see ourselves starting to produce products that do not cost the earth and actually will keep our planet health um, healthy and clean for the next seven generations down. Um, so I'm going to end it there. Um, thank you all so much for staying and listening. Um, if you want the replay, um, the replay will be available and I will send it out. We'll also post it up. Um, if you have any feedback, um, please do email me, rebecca at rebeccashaman.com. If you have any further questions, please do email me. Please visit the British Hemp, uh, British Hemp Association website at britishhempassociation.co.uk. Uh, my website is also rebecca, uh, rebeccashaman.com if you want to know more about me. And, um, yeah, we, I'll keep you posted. I'd love to do a webinar on the history of hemp. It's a very, very interesting history. And once we understand the history, then we can see the politi how it's become so politicized. So um, I hope that you have found it very, very useful. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. And I look forward to um, reconnecting with you next month on a new topic. Um, have a wonderful rest of the evening and a wonderful rest of the um, week. Take care for now. Bye.